Woo-hoo! So I decided to do this intro on a trampoline because I thought it would be fun. And because it was the only way to get away from all the children at the house where I am staying right now. So what you're about to watch is the commentary to my first feature length film. You know, in addition to being a YouTuber and doing documentary stuff and podcasting, I'm a feature length filmmaker. That's what I do. Working on the second one right now. And this was a commentary that we recorded two years after completing the movie. And that was three years ago in 2018. I was never stoked about this uh, commentary for a lot of reasons. You can, you can hear my, my co-commentator get more spiritual, let's say, as the night gets on. And I think that the, the track sounds rushed because we, we actually had to re-record the commentary about 40 minutes into the movie, the recording gear craps out and we had to start over. And in an effort to be thorough and archival, you can hear me nonstop just trying to fill as many factoids into the narrative as possible. And it doesn't feel natural. It feels, I don't know. I was very self-conscious about it. But I realized if I'm uploading my film to YouTube, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't think there's gonna be a, a blue Blu-ray release anytime soon for a lot of reasons. One of which, because I'm so DIY. And the costs, they just don't make sense for me at the moment. But I hate, hate, hate having stuff just sort of rot on hard drives. You know, I don't want it to stay on a shelf. And since the new trend seems to be putting your independent feature length film on YouTube anyway, why not put it up? And so, if I'm gonna include the narrative, why not include the narrative with the commentary track that I recorded, even if I don't like it very much. Perhaps eventually when I do a Blu-ray and take this thing off of YouTube, I will record a new commentary track. So that is what you're gonna watch. Thank you so much for enjoying the shaky trampoline video. Woo! Robbie Bloodshed music video. Metal. <laughs> this was also, this was just a, that was just a scrap. And I just put the beginning. This is round two. We ran out of room on the disc for round one. That was shot in the uh, basement of my apartment building. A very... An uh, afterthought. Uh, no, no, that was your parents' uh, no, garage. Not, no, no, not not those candles. No? Nope. Me dressed up like the gravedigger was. This was Udemeyer Park uh, in Yonkers. Definitely go to Udemeyer Park if you're it's ever beautiful. in Yonkers. It's amazing. And this was generally, I mean, this was a really fun day to shoot. I just told him to dance around. Everybody had to get comfortable. This was like, no, none of us knew each other. Those are the Palisade clothes. Snap. And this was our first shooting day so, with uh, T.S. Anthony. Oh, well. That's right. The opening theme. And this was shot at Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, the old Dutch cemetery. And it was Anthony's first day of shooting. We, uh, we had this guy, Gil, before, but he didn't work out. And so, Anthony, who I knew from WCC. Gil fucking 
sucked. All right. Um, Gil was uh, not going to work out, and so we went with Anthony, who I knew for... He was a weirdo, but he didn't work out. I love this statue of this chick with missing her nose. If you look at the bottom corner, it says baby boy. It's really messed up. They didn't even name the baby. That is pretty crazy. This was uh, Anthony's idea. We we found this random... We, this was just supposed to be him eating his sandwich, but he came up with the idea to interact with the statue. And it just added so much to the character without even, you know... Without even saying a word. It's just all it's visual. A, such a beautiful monument, too, that yeah. uh, we found here. And... Uh, uh, th this was uh, in uh, Sleepy Hollow, right? Yeah. We got kicked out. <laughs> and that was shot a year later. Uh, had to insert the Gravedigger character. He uh, originally was not in the script. And that is me as the Gravedigger. I, I covered myself in coffee to make myself look dirty. And this was also uh, Anthony's idea to just make this flower part of the flower motif we have running through the film. Flower, I don't know what the flower means. The flower is just, I guess it's like a vagina. Yeah. It's like wow. virginity, you know, women, like a, know. like a woman, you know, I guess. What I will say again is, is Anthony is a fucking genius. He really is. He really is. This was his first time acting on film. Or video, whatever you want to call it. He's a stage actor. This is one of the most fun times we had. In, uh, yeah. Probably the whole shooting. Of the film. Originally, I wanted to re-record the um, audio for this, but we just, you know, Nick arranged it on the uke, ukulele. It sounded so good. We were just like, shit, let's just keep it. I made it sound like it was coming out of his uh, headphones. I did all the uh, post sound on this film. And uh, just put some notch filters on it to make it sound like it was coming out of the headphones. This is one of our only GoPro shots in the film. We had to. That, yeah, that tower it was too so wide. Tall. Yeah, we wanted to get the whole yeah. thing in. I think that's why it was a GoPro, actually. And uh, I bought that scooter. I remember I bought that Razor scooter at Walmart, returned it right after. We used it for this one day. And uh, remember, kids, uh, wheelchairs are not that functional as dollies. Not at all. Do actually, this right don't here, use this, them. Is a, this is a wheelchair dolly shot that sucks. There's my Mazda in the background. And there's, you'll see Nick's car at some point. <laughs> That's a that's the sound of a baseball lying in the grass that I used for. Uh, uh, and uh, all the sound here is just done post, except for these these leaves are uh, were captured wild by Nick. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, you just really did it. You just did it, and I was like, yeah, I found it. I was like, because there was it was missing. Yeah. I needed some sort of crunch. I used a lot of sound from <laughs> AudioBlocks.com. Great. Get a subscription. Use them. They're fantastic. I've always hated this J sequence. Uh, I know. It's, it's very uh, it's slow. It's so slow. It's so slow. Um, but the score is great. Well, well obviously. It's, uh, Nick, <laughs> I, I told Nick I wanted Jaws, and he gave me that. And here's Grandma eating her crack cheese balls. That's Nicolas Cage. On the friggin' That's a great label, man. Yeah. Like, did you make that? I photoshopped that, yeah. yeah. Every label was photoshopped. And that that's Grand Pe Budapest Hotel playing on the TV. Hi, Grandma. And that's Dave Street as Grandma, except for my grandma. That's my real grandma. That's uh, Rini Mandel. She's 88 years old. Oh. We shot all of her scenes in 10 you minutes. Don't worry about me, okay? And just her head. And what's amazing is that was shot a year after this was shot. So I was afraid they weren't going to match. 
The beauty of black and white. Yeah, black and I white hides all the seams, white. man. We shot. If you're gonna go art house, you gotta go black and white. You and really do. This was not done. This black and white was not done in post. This was done in camera monochrome. We we did this intentionally because we knew we were making a cheap film, and um, we knew where it was gonna be hard to match colors and stuff like that. And it's a, it's a well, so I'm we not knew. a cinematographer, and Nick was like, you should shoot the movie. And to help to make it easier to light, we lit everything shot in black and white. Bobby. Yeah. Small file sizes, really small right. file sizes. And uh, Jeff, who, who you're hearing over the phone right now, he had already wrapped his role, and I needed him, and I didn't want to drive all the way back to Connecticut to get him. And Nick suggested that we... Or that I right over the phone? just record him over the phone. It totally worked. So I, just like the way HR recorded Sacred Love from jail through a phone. Yes. Yes, uh, this was done in the same way. <laughs> and so there's no filters on Jeff right now. He's literally through the phone. Totally works. He was on Bryan Avenue again. And he had the camera around his neck. <laughs> I love no, the way this looks. No, it's not what you think. I love. I think this is some of the best it. shot stuff right I here. Do it. We were losing light. You were telling me to rush. Sick little I think. I think this is, we got the best but of uh, both no. the actors in, the, in, in this scene. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Adam Storty. Sorry if I'm butchering your last name. He was great as Bobby in the scene. They both Do were. And Anthony is like insane. I mean, look at this. Look at his face Do you here. Understand me? Look at that. <laughs> He's crazy. Yeah. And Anthony is just. Man. I guess I can let you go then. He's and it's so, so funny because everything's blown uh, out because I don't know how to expose, but it just looks great in black and white. Who cares? I came here on Halloween and I did that. I put those twigs up in the background. I put all the. Before we shot. This was an afterthought. This shot, I just it, it barely. I don't know how it just. Yeah, stuck we it in. we free jazz up. It was like, oh yeah, take the camera. Couldn't walk figure away. out the mechanics of how to do it on the leaf pile without making it look stupid. Yeah, I think you should see for yourself. This is actually a really important plot point, but like, it doesn't even really make sense. That song is from the band Wolfface. They're pretty great. Thought it worked for this scene. Really love this set. It's probably my favorite set. We never show uh, Anthony's glasses actually getting broken, but um, that's right. That's a little. Like, it's kind of implied that his glasses were broken and he in taped the fight, them up. I guess. But uh, we were supposed to show that later because this was shot before. I guess. Yeah, yeah. And this was all made up. This was in my bedroom. This is Jeff's bedroom and uh, at my old apartment, and that was a blank wall, and it just made it, uh, peppered it with photos and stuff that will come into play later. And here is uh, one of our vivid dream color sequences. Huh. Uh, this is a uh, uh, very interesting uh, dream. Uh, I guess Anthony. Not Anthony, sorry. Um, James, the character of James, he's you know he's never been with a girl, so he can't really imagine what it's like to you know get a blowjob from a girl. And so, in in his subconscious, this is the closest he can experience that sort of uh, pleasure. And uh, yeah, and I told him too, and that right there, I was just like you know, I was like telling him you know what. To, she bites it, though. She does. I know, but I mean, he wouldn't, you know, I guess he's into that, you know? <laughs> oh! That's got to hurt. I don't know. I don't get it right there. The, I mean, I yeah, get it up until Yeah, this scene is designed there, but... to make you feel really uncomfortable. I even said this to you. I, I, I yeah, was you like, wanted dude, me to cut this out. I was like, yeah, I, no, that blowjob No scene. way, man. It's got to like... stay. It's got to make you feel uncomfortable. This was shot at night, too. That's a painter can out. Painter Is light it? outside. Yeah, that was not during the day. And this is in New Jersey at Dave Street's house. And that is... I, I did not set dress that. That is how it looked when I <laughs> came in. And I was like, just taking shots. Because it looked great. And so we went from my house in White Plains to New Jersey. I'm 
that's my hand. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just kept cutting to my grandma, but that's Dave right there. You know, it's funny. You know, Uncle Elmo oh. and Grandma could have been the same person. If you so really who's think feeding about it. your actual grandma? Are you? Feeding I'm feeding your grandma? my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yep. They're wearing the same wig too to try and make it match. That's the so same good. Wig. That's so good. To sweeten that with some oh uh, extra sounds. Your grandma is awesome. I know. We must have done this shot about ten times. Oh my god. One shot. This shot took forever. Took all day. But it was so great to do. I mean, it, like, it looks great. I envisioned it way differently at first. All that sliding down the banister stuff, that was all Anthony. And so, yeah, originally there was a song by TSOL here, but I could not get the rights to it. And uh, Nick Nick uh, composed this. This is called TSOL. Oh, well. Because if we can't get TSOL, oh well, we'll oh just well. have our, <laughs> we'll just have our own TSOL. Yeah. Um, but I guess it gets it. It get you know the the, the feeling of the song I think it's gets the, the. You get the. I think you. This get is hard the, stale. Yeah, yeah. That's right next to where the uh, uh, they walk down the path later. And this is just Anthony and I hopped on the MTA uh, North. And uh, headed to the city, didn't ask permission, just shot, shot a bunch of shit, you know? And uh, wasn't sure if anybody was gonna stop us, but uh, you know, we just figured the best production value was just to go out into the world and get it. And uh, I'm really happy with the way these shots came out too. We only had like two hours to do all this. It was really hectic. This is Grand Central Station. And uh, tried to um, do everything out of like a really shallow depth of field because I didn't want to get anybody in the background. But if I did this over, I would just totally shoot it. I wouldn't give a, give a shit. I like your style, Jeff. And this, I told Anthony, I said, just walk in and walk out. We shot the interiors Great at shot. the apartment. Now we're back at the apartment. I don't know. This is nighttime, I think. And this is nighttime. <laughs> Nick hung uh, painter lights outside. I really I love I lit again. the shit. Out of this yeah, he did a really good job. It. There's no other lights actually. This is all it seems the only all light from outside. is all from outside. The reason behind the actions you've taken. Worked really well. This is in white planes. Your motivations, your intentions. An audio box provided the uh, so? New York ambiance so? underneath. What does it mean? He was great. The love. To feel he he, this, he furred his brow. Goes, he's yeah. like, I'm like, what are you doing? Are you okay? And like, for, uh, Nick's like, oh no, he's getting into the moment. Definition. I didn't know. <laughs> he's like, just let him be. Just let him be. Like, oh right. yeah, before we shot, it's you were really like, yeah. like, I was okay? like, dude, are you okay? Like, 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 James, like, he's really. James is really good. Uh, Anthony's doing it great here too. Is. Well, I don't want to say. You have a lot of freedom now, James. And that flower. Do you want that? Man, that flower was through the whole production. Oh. All 15 months, it was the same flower. One flower for $3.50. It was like the most important prop. My report it was funny, too, because if we lost that flower, we would have had, would've had to, I don't know, there was no I other flower. Otherwise. Do you understand? Like, they didn't have it when I went I back understand. to the store. Right. Okay, then. Love. Remember, the, you they'll let you return all those flowers, to too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Later on, you'll hurt. see. Later on. Well, that, that, I'm see. getting ahead of myself. To me, it is. Why not a blessing? Because it's painful. He never had those headphones Very connected painful. to anything. I just always had them, you had them wear them. You know. Pain is all there is. I really love these shots. You want your yeah. puzzle piece yeah. to fit. Yeah, this was just all my there. furniture. We just just rearranged it. it. Hurts I took it all does. the plants downstairs. It's just living room. It's yeah, just I took all the plants downstairs in the lobby the of the of my apartment building, and I brought them up. I asked my building super Probably for permission. Forever. Totally let me do it. Don't you think it's more complex than that? Yeah, it really looks like it just could be in some more than one psychiatrist's office. Ice cream, isn't there? Really, I really love this shot. The love that a boy feels for the scene was way longer, and I cut I it way down. There's a lot of plot, like 
like plot right. stuff in here. I just sort of chopped uh, the out the James stuff. Yeah. 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 The um, boy feels for well, you this this is the only place where Bobby is specifically friends. mentioned as the boyfriend. Otherwise, you don't really right, know who right, he is. Right. And I'd rather leave it a little ambiguous. Now we're back outside. That was just some homeless person and his cart, and I was like, just walk by him right at uh, Cooper Square. And now we're at St. Mark's. Everybody's out of focus again. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to make the most of the surroundings, you know? And, and these these people, they're just walking down the sidewalk. I went, was on the other side, and I just rolled the camera, and they just walked through the frame. It worked great. This is a great shot. And now we're in White Plains again at Stop and Shop. There's Nick as the <laughs> concern me. shopper. It's me, everybody. Concern shopper. I love that there's a sign. You can see uh, he's blocking it right now, but there's a sign that says, Use your melon. <laughs> right there, use your melon. Yeah, I love it. Don't you have a... You had a close-up of it at some point. Might have. I might have gotten cut, or it might be over yeah. here. This was an afterthought, this this scene, because we have a scene later with a melon. It was like, well, we got to set up how he gets the melon, right? So this was just written on the fly. This is the last day of shooting, actually. That was like uh, the final day of production. And this was at Panera Bread. This was early on. Yeah, this is like... This just makes no sense. It's like drawing this her. It's like the second day of shooting, yeah. probably. Like that. He's just like drawing her, but he like his <laughs> view of her is so fucked up. I took all those photos. I forgot about this. Man. Yeah. Wow. That's the same. I did. I literally. And this took is like ten a, seconds. that was an abandoned house, right? Like, I know. I mean, it was just a, house, a derelict house. I just took yeah, ten yeah. seconds of it, and that's it. It's been it's used like five or six times in the. Uncle Elmo. James, good boy. There's Dave How's Street the back in Jersey. Busy? Uh, this was shot at Dave's house, and Dave plays, like I said, Dave plays grandma. And Dave used to manage the Misfits back in 1979. He booked them with the Damned at Haraz and a couple other places. And Dave is just a very talented guy. And, you know, all these hand movements he's doing, Dave just came up with that himself. I bought chocolate rain. I played a joke on him. Supposed to say coconut fudge from the uh, mm. s the song from the White Album. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, Sav yeah, yeah. Savoy Truffle. Oh. Supposed to say coconut fudge. He said chocolate fudge. It's all good. It still works. I added a little bit of a scent there. I wanted him to look like he's like a wheezy old man. Yeah, but Dave just like sort of, uh, he memorized the lines and then he just did all these hand gestures and stuff and they add so much, I think, to his character, you know. The scene is kind of like, you know, it's, it's kind of like long and a bit of a slog, but it's like the inciting incident for the rest of the story, so I couldn't cut it out. Yeah, yeah. And Dave is so great in it. Delicious. Tastes even better when they're stolen. He was great with that laugh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I really like this piece of music that Nick put in. It just I don't fits. Know. I hate it. I, th I think it. Nick hates it, but I love it. I, I, it, uh, I think that uh, maybe it's mixed a little too high, but it just it, it really fits with Uncle Elmo. Frankenstein, your Uncle Elmo was. Have you ever fallen in love with someone you shouldn't have fallen? And Jay, you know, I would say Anthony is a little hamming hamming it up a little bit in this scene. I think they both are. Well, but, yeah, it's like it's like yeah. trauma. I mean, it yeah, really yeah. is. It's like trauma. And this was all recorded on a dinky little lav in this scene. I mean, I literally set it up behind those cheese balls, and I'm surprised that it, like, sounds the way it sounds. It sounds great. I can't, I can't get over it. That's a, that's a Rode la, uh, Smart Plus lavalier on a dinky little recorder, man. Well, you should get a... You know, I normalize the audio. I know. I normalize the audio like you... you Guys, it's all about normalizing your audio, okay? It is. You're going to get... What happens if they run away? Well, sometimes they do. But why? Why is that? Yeah, it's a little Because handy. they don't know what they want. 
think it's scared. It's a little Please long. Love it's yeah. Yeah. A little bit. He says Carmelita. We don't know which good he talks point. about this chick Carmelita. Carmelita is the Ooh, title right. of a Gigi Allen song. Yeah, so yeah. Probably the best thing that Gigi Allen ever Wait. did. I really don't like Gigi Allen that much, Why? but that's a great song. You. Are you in love for a very long time, Uncle Elmo? I even tried yeah, to he's, forget he about tells him, he's like, you gotta seize it. the day, you know, carpe diem. Why didn't you say so, boy? You must and he just did all those gestures. Well, I was like, I just think it's great. He's just like... <laughs> You see, sometimes that that that's like that always impressed me about the scene that he did that he just came up that all that that's all him not me because it only happens once in a lifetime lightning in a bottle but I don't want to be in any more trouble I could go to jail and those glasses oh my god those are the only glasses we had if we lost them yeah yeah and Anthony was like I want to hold on to them and I was like no I'm holding on to them. <laughs> He, he like just oh, was gonna. And, those weren't his legs. No, I, I, I bought those at a thrift shop. Like, like, no, man, I have those at home. Those are those were bought at a That's thrift store. Garbage They're like garbage '70s grandma garbage glasses. Garbage yeah. Diem. Carpe diem. And I bought another pair that we were just supposed to break, and we never did. Right. And they weren't the same kind, but from far away, it wouldn't have mattered. Here we go. Here's Nana oh. again. I said, Nana, be sad. That's Nana. That's Nana and my grandfather right after World War II when he was in the Navy. And this, is, uh, this is an interesting little scene. He's writing a letter to Jane, the girl that he likes. And uh, this is my, like I said, this is my favorite set. Plastered all those pictures up there before we shot. Dude, we fucking, it was a white we, wall. We built this fucking set. And uh, you'll Beautiful. notice there's some Phantom of the Paradise uh, pictures up. There's Beef and the Phantom. Because mm -hmm. I friggin' love that movie. And, um, and you know, this is a great example. Like, all this now, none of this was in the screenplay. This was all figured out in the edit. And it taught me, as a filmmaker, that you find the movie... There's so many different ways to write the movie, and don't stress so much on the script. Just worry about the story, and there's a difference between the two. Um, yeah, and he's looking over his pictures, but they remain out of focus, which is really great, because it, it makes for a nice reveal as to That's what they are. It's a good fucking frame. It's, it is. It's, it's all good. And those are the pictures we drew. There's the titty picture you were talking about <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah. And the melon. Now we know, oh, that's the melon he bought at the supermarket. What the hell is he going to do with that melon? Oh. 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 That is just uncalled for. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> he got a zebra pillow. I can't believe he's doing it. Yeah, so the uh, Kim, Kim and I basically, Kim and I. yeah, we took all these pictures. We walked around the city center and took all these pictures about 150, and then I went to Kinko's at 3 o'clock in the morning, I printed, Xeroxed them, printed them out, and then cut them out the next day to shoot this scene. And, um... I mean, it was kind of insane, because we had to, like, build the story through the photos. And the music that, the, you know, the, the Jaws theme... Good. The Jaws theme works well with the pumping. I mean, that was totally unplanned. That was, once again, found in the edit, you know? And this all matched up perfectly. And... I kind of, I love this, how it, it's know, like... it came out so nicely. And uh, color is meant to tell us that something is from a flashback. So it's like using, um, it's basically saying, hey, this is a flashback without actually flashing back or without like actually telling you, I guess. I don't know. And that was not a real bed. That Why was... does love <laughs> have to be this way? Why are the words and, uh, so hard to say to this was um I wrote this song waiting in line at Target and it just came to me and I was like we have to put it in the movie 
And, um, you know, who hasn't, like, sang in the shower, you know what I mean? It just works, you know? This movie is, a, a lot of this movie is like a character study. It's not, like a, it's like a character study, and it's like, I don't know, it's like a, a thematic narrative instead of, like, a story-driven narrative, I guess. Um, and, yeah, it's like, who hasn't sang in the shower, you know? I know I have. Nick, you didn't admit to singing in the shower. You never sing in the shower. Well, I, I, I would, I would go further. It's, it's, it's just another brilliant song that Jeff has written uh, as part of the score of this thing. It's, it's really amazing. Come on, Grandma. Oh. You can hear my friend Will in the background. This place is a mess. What's wrong? There's my friend Here. Adam. You want to try bananas instead? Mmm, it's good. And there's Rusty. Yeah, she hated really shooting that hungry? part. Really? My grandmother loves me so much that she let me feed her baby food. Grandma, what are you doing? So who's that right there? That's Dave. That's Dave. Yeah. But that is my grandma, and that's my papa. Come on, Grandma. R. Focus. R.I.P. Here we go. You I guess grandma's kind of based on my actual grandma because, you know, she's like a widow. Yeah. You know? Hey, grandpa. And, yeah, it kind of plays together. Here's her only line. I don't know why I wanted to put her in this movie, but I was like, I just, I was like, I got a grandma. I got a You were hell bent on it from the so, beginning. Oh, it was yeah. such an important detail to me. Yeah. I just, because I, 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 I love her. I love her. I just wanted to put her in the movie. I thought she'd be great. And she killed it. I remember we were drawing all this thing. Yep. Amazing. Notice the Halloween decorations inside. This scene's kind of like uh, interesting too because you know it's like a, it's a really obvious on the on the nose metaphor, for the fact that James just. Well, because this comes so later. Uh, what does from that I remember it? Oh, the flowers? No, this scene in general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it doesn't really. I mean, he's just supposed to be like a morality character, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yes. He's like, I need you know, a she's the only flower, and, you know, he's like, dude, it's fucked up. You can't pluck yeah. flowers. Fuck you. Thanks. Right. That's Stevie. He worked at P.F. Chang's with me and never acted a friggin' day in his life and just did this role. I was like, dude, you have so to do this sorry, role, and I just knew it'd be good. I call him you Seymour the Flower Shop Lady. I don't even know what this is. Are you serious? Really? You this this oh, scene is beautiful. I'm so hands, glad like, you think so, because I don't think it looks like a flower shop okay. at all. Look at it. Where exactly look at it. is that? Yeah. I don't know. Some garden? I mean, I guess it does look very green, right? <sighs> bought $200 worth of fake horrible? flowers from Walmart. So you just, which then, you returned. Which I returned. Got, I, got, his money back. I got $6 back from Walmart because they were, like, on clearance. In order to give me a refund, they had to give me $6. Oh, yeah. He got his money back plus $6 or something No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know... I mean, it's like style. It's like a stylized flower shop, but the actual flower shop was like giving me like stress, and I was like, "Fuck this! We'll just make our own." So, you literally just saw that therapist scene, and it's the same exact room. This is the exact the other end of the right. This corner will be Dale's office. Yes. Yeah. So we used my apartment just multiple times. And this I is uh, this ducks. is the Hitchcock Pond yeah, in Hartsdale. So we shot a little in Hartsdale too. Oh, he's so cinematic. We used walkie-talkies. We're like action on one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. And that's uh, CC Cherie Scott Hello. Cooper. CC is a the brilliant. Coolest. She's honestly Thanks. brilliant, and she also has never acted in a film. Yeah, and I said. Cece, I believe in you. I think Thanks. you are so talented, and I really want to put you in this movie, and I just know you're going to kill this role. And I, I think she has some of the best acting in the movie. I mean, she just killed it. Yes. Actually, how did you know? She was just I awesome. I myself for taking pictures. I love taking pictures. And that suit, so so that suit was bought at a thrift store, I too, yours? I think. 
I had it, you know, it got covered in mildew, but I had it all the way until like really recently. I finally had to throw it out. Very Never nice. washed it once. I like the way you're dressed. Covered in and chocolate that sauce. Suit with Uncle Elmo's hat is really sharp. Oh, the suit was but uh, yeah, we shot this. A lot of this movie shot like it's reverse, reverse shot, reverse shot over I the shoulder. Um, kind of like oh. I kind of really hate that. I, I'm so sorry and I think the next that. movie I shoot is just gonna He's be a lot a of two piece. shots with like the. It's gonna be about the performance of the actors instead of the edit. You okay. know, I feel like this movie really suffers from that. I don't. I, I wouldn't say that. It's, it's weird. Like, see, this is great. Watching it Look now, like, this is this is amazing. Like, and I didn't like this, actually. What this shot? Yes. I love this because they're they're like literally. It's like they're doing Ooh. this dance as a, in a two wow. shot. You know. Yeah, thanks. It's like there's it no cutting. It's just about them yeah, talking, and that's what I like about it. I didn't like it. this initially, but now I really, really like yeah. it. Yeah, it works great. I'm doing yeah. this art project it's like I, next movie I shoot, I want it to be all like this, you know? Come on, let's go. Wait. Right now? He didn't hit his mark, though. He's supposed to go back a little bit further. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the other take was out of focus way too much, so I had to use this one. But they're both good. Right this moment? Well, no, not and there was crazy moment, noises so in the background, like and were you, mm -hmm. you were like, dude, we just gotta go, we just gotta go. I was like, all right. At the time, yeah. though, I was stressing so hard about it. it. Where are your fates of music in? Yeah. What makes you say that? This, so this is I mean, some Nick like Bell music. This is Ballad anything, of the Dead Fairies. And I, I wrote this, but Nick recorded it. Like he did the arrangement. It's and it's another it great motif in the movie. The, the music was great. Nick scored just about everything. If you gotta go, then you gotta go. Well, I mean, I guess I don't have to go just yet. Yeah. We have one good. problem with this scene. It's, it's a little too much on this 50 50. Shall we? Yeah. It, it, it but it also just fucking goes. It's a little cut in, you know? Yeah. But. Look, he rushes back for his uke. <laughs> well, you gotta get that uke. Yeah, the backpack, yeah. I did a lot of layering okay, to keep Frank so Sinatra blown out. First oh, this is funny. Oh, yeah. He's like, give me Frank Sinatra meets Marilyn Monroe, and that's his response. <laughs> I mean, that was that was totally thought up in the moment too, because it's like you know. This is some fun. Uh, well, I remember the the cars were so loud. Oh yeah, that was annoying. Okay, yeah. The uh, the sound mix, the mixing of the sound in this one was, was really problematic. I can hear every imperfection in it, because it just you could tell when the when it's going up and I don't know. It just bothers me. Who's that? Huh? Ferdinand. Ferdinand is now a major the motion picture, but I remember it as oh, a child. It's a, yeah, it's a story about a really peaceful bull. Who smells flowers. Yeah, huh? yep. Under a cork tree in Spain. <laughs> Under a cork tree? My dad used to read it when he was a little Who's boy, that? and then he used to read it to me. My mother. And this shot was great, too. They just to shoot through the legs. I get going myself. Really? I thought we were having a good time. We were having a good time. It's just... This is really uh, high-contrasty, though. To... Can Couldn't... we at least go... The problem was shooting in-camera monochrome, which this entire movie is shot in black and white, in the camera, is that you're pretty much baked in. You know, you're, whatever you shoot, it's baked in. Like, you can't really, can't really adjust things in post. And so it's like a... It's a weird trade-off, because you get... It's easier to... Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shot came out really good. That was just an impromptu shot too. Okay. We came to this location. We came to this location to scout it. it a this great, shot. There's a great location. Right. Over the um, the Harlem um, train uh, train line. This is my here. Wes Anderson shot. And uh, you can just hang out there. It's it's, it's really shot cool. a music video here too. Uh, rap video. Change the side. Rip a rap. Yeah, this is good. It's where J James gets real. Yeah, he does. This is amazing. Like, this is so amazing. What if this, this feeling I have. What are you feeling? I love the way his glasses are like white. I feel yeah, important. Yeah. That originally said free Tex Watson on the right. Now, I didn't know who Tex Watson was at the time. Now I do. I feel really bad about it. So I had to change it. 
I love how she's like tilting her head down, like the conflict there. You know, hey, she's like, oh, I'm about to do something really fucked actually up. Actually, get your ukulele. This is a great you can shot. Film something. That'll be this cool. was Nick's idea to okay. shoot from this angle. I have been working on this new song. Do you want to hear he's it? He's originally, in yeah, the script, he's supposed to sing Cheesecake of Love, and she's supposed to join him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then she sneaks off as he gets really into singing the song, and that just... Song, cheesecake. We didn't have time. We didn't have time. We did this instead. Hey. This is a great way to leave. He carries around his ukulele in his backpack forever until this moment. It's the last time he'll be with it. This was shot on another Who's day. This? What song is this? This is uh, this song is by the Imperial Vind, Nim Vind. Uh, it's off his uh, album Fear of Fear. No, sorry. This is my it's, shot. I, I love it. Yeah, it's a great shot. No, the song's called Fear of Fear, but I love this song. And I couldn't originally had a cover of I Put a Spell on You by the Crypt Keeper Five, but I couldn't get the rights. So Nim gave me this song. I shot a music video for him in exchange. And the rest is history. If you need good music or you need songs from musicians, offer to shoot the music videos and they will most likely trade with you. How's it, is it working? It's oh. good. This shot took a long time to do too. Yep. Yeah. That's supposed to be Bobby, but it's actually me because we didn't have Bobby. That's Jeff. And this is this is all new. You haven't seen this, or you did earlier, but that's in the basement of the apartment building. And this was impromptu too. We're like, we had that crazy light. I was like, just hold it over yeah. your face. And I was like, that's so fucking good. I'm just gonna put it in. This was all shot later because we had to add the grave digger character. That lighting was different. I don't know what that was. That was a uh, emergency tablet. <laughs> it's totally like making some poison. Fucking when are you, when you're dude. drinking grapes, you gotta get your vitamin C. Yeah, you know yeah. exactly. It's crushing up flowers and stuff. <laughs> I think I plucked those flowers from my mother's garden. Oh my god! That's Look, terrible. see, it came back. I needed, I needed something to fill in the space, and I was like, fuck it, we'll put the dream sequence back in. Oh, really you put it back any, in? Yeah, it really oh, didn't make okay. any sense. I was like, fuck it, I'll put it back in. She pops it, makes him so mad. He's like, Hulk smash. I actually like the way this plays better than it did before. Oh, this is cool. It's I just haven't like seen a juxt- this. This is I haven't just like a... This? Listen with the music. That was good. This is good. I like it. And now you'll hear a cameo from my son, my two-year-old son singing She Loves You by the Beatles. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this shot, too. This is... I envisioned this shot for so fucking long, and we shot it on the last day. You're like, dude, I don't get it. Oh, dude, I was so insistent on that. It meant so much to me. My son's name is Jordan. He says his name. I really want him to have a little cameo. I've got a whole other half of the fucking movie to go on here. What, from here? Yeah. We haven't even met Dale yet. This is the halfway point. This is where our our antagonist or antagonist question mark comes into the story. And that's always the problem. The network. And in the end, the greatest worry for the client is... Now, this is in that flower shop. That's the flower shop. This is the very first uh, day of shooting. That's exactly why we are... This this is the very first thing we shot. Yeah, Especially second thing we shot. In your kind of Third thing we shot. This is the final so scene we shot. There's the voice. She'd be in that book. Eligible? I've Even worked with the, the voice channel? several times. So there's our little Dale. Uh, no, a there's uh, Dexter. Yeah, kind of like Dexter. a foreshadowing. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, this is crazy. 
it's lit pretty well. It's like lit very like um, evenly. If you sit and go through this contract, you'll find that just about everything is in network. You know, I put some office ambience underneath, but you can't really hear it on the speaker. Oh yeah, you Tell can hear me. it a little bit. When you take everything that we've spoken about and you boil I it mean, down, I mean, I originally Dale was supposed to be a sheriff, and I changed him to an insurance. I wanted him to be like a good well, guy that like does good things for people, kind and of high. you know, so he's an insurance salesman and he helps Tired people, things. you know, find good insurance. Yeah. He's like, he's like. <laughs> but that's not what I'm thinking. Of. He's like thinking of family, you, you know. Yes. But <laughs> Jeff uh, Jeff Solomon's one of the great unheralded gems of the uh, indie world. Indie world. Jeff Solomon's New York. awesome. He. Uh, it's funny. I was watching Orange Is the New Black, and there's Jeff sitting in the pews in the back. He does a lot of background uh, character acting. Does he? Work. <laughs> I was just laughing because I was like, "Oh, there's Jeff." Um, but yeah, Jeff works a lot, and he's just a just a grade A professional, and I just loved working with him. And um, the yeah, voice was, is just an idiot, though. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Nick and Nick, uh, shots fired. Um, shots fired. This was the very shot. first shot. shot. This is the first shot on the first day of production. And we're in a rolling wheelie chair in the digital art experience. And apparently we left the place a mess. I don't think we did. I don't know. Rob Kistner chewed me out in an email. Right here. You see, you see oh, CC right there's here. the reveal. <laughs> They're in cahoots. And this was the second thing we shot. This is the very first thing, I think. The very second thing. we No, no, on the same day. Oh, first yeah, day, yeah. second shot. You can hear the, the ruffling of the it lobs. Was. I couldn't get rid of that. Well, we were it's in fine. a car. I love the way she's lit, though. She's lit so well in this car. This is Central Avenue, Yonkers. Yeah, yeah we just put, I just put a, uh, an LED light panel on her. Yonkers, New York. This is uh, we're just cruising up and down. Oh my god! And I like made us like fucking roll forever in the yes. car. Yo, remember that shot? You like that shot? Like Jeff was like, let's do one where we just roll for like nineteen. <laughs> just minutes. breathe, just breathe, guys. That's what I said. Yeah. This is uh, actually at De uh, Jeff is, Solomon's house. He Jeff let us Solomon's shoot there. House. Yeah. And this scene got really trimmed down, like crazy trimmed down. It was this so was much so longer. Long, this this was a nightmare to fucking shoot too. Yes, Dale. I'm afraid I'm gonna need the memory card. And it doesn't really, it really make well, sense. Yeah, no, I mean it's definitely shot well. Nick got us a um, a 14 millimeter L series Canon. Zeiss Prime oh, man. lens. We had the best lens. It was beautiful, and when you use that on a crop sensor camera, it doesn't fisheye because it's a fisheye lens. And so we got this really weird That's warp. Why we, we had this great, like, a, like you see Cece's face there. Yeah, I mean, and the and, lens—it's so clear. It's amazing. Yeah, what you can do with those. Okay, things. so what happens now? It's his sweetheart. And this is some public domain Remember music that I found. Sam, just go. Yeah, yeah I just up, wanted something in the back. You see? I told you she was just going to cause problems. You guys are going to hurt him, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, the scene cuts to together to really well. Honey. Listen. We're almost together, Sam. We all agreed, remember? That's Papa Zale. <laughs> Put my Papa uh, from World War II on yep. the bottle. Yep. Thing that you can do. Wish we featured it more. And you'll even see behind Jeff's face. I mean, I put photos of Kim everywhere because I really wanted to sell that this was her house. And so I got a lot of frames and we just I carried them around with me and I just would place them everywhere. You'll you'll see them throughout his house. You've spent on the refrigerator. Yeah, this was a really fucking long scene. I mean, this was this was this is where the movie dips. It's just long. And the next scene, I really like it as a scene, but if I didn't do the fucking sound design already and like have the mix in audition, I probably would have cut out the next scene completely. But I'm not gonna do it. Well, this, this is what I always said to you. I'm like, you can either have this scene or the next scene. You did. You've always said that to me, and I do. I kept both. But you know, whatever. I mean, the idea behind. Behind it is that Dale 
time. Dale has seduced these two young people to do his bidding. I think and you here, can cut this down way shorter. Uh, yeah, I mean, dude, all of it could be cut he down. His probation, and then it just goes too long. To the police. It'll go away for a long time. But first, first we gotta scare him. Scare he's him telling really her he's gonna, you know, to get yeah, he's, he's just he's trying tell, to, he's, he's get, telling her whatever. She, he, no, but he's telling her, you know, but not to worry. So now, uh, an idea, an afterthought that would have been the perfect ending for her character. Because this is where she leaves the story. Right. But in reality, she should have come back. In my version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Nick came up with this. It's fucking great. Yeah, I know. She comes back. She peeks through the basement window. She crawls down. She's the one who frees James, and James kills her because because she because, betrayed him. Right. And that would have been perfect. Okay. Perfect. I will. But that's and not what happens. In this that's not what happens in this movie. But that would have been. But it would have been awesome. Should should this movie ever get remade in the future, that's what would happen. Samantha. Straight home. I like that he gave her a kiss on the on the forehead. I don't think that's in the it's script. Creepy, I think they just man. did it. I don't like no. this whole scene. It's creepy. I think man. it works. Look, there's there's pictures of Kim in the background. There's more pictures of Kim on the side right there on the fridge. Thank you. And there's that beautiful fish eye like lens. Shot. I love that shot. That's not fish eyeing. Yeah, this is a great shot when he disappears into the other room. Just walks into the other room. So we got this, this great fourteen millimeter lens. Dale, at Cannon Dale becomes lens, unhinged. In the living room. It's like every room we travel into Dale's house is really a metaphor of his mind, and he gets a little bit more unhinged as he goes from room to room. Ooh, nope, but it came out nice. I don't think we could have shot that without that fourteen millimeter lens. It was perfect. Yeah. It was very wide. Like scotch, buddy. This actually came out good yeah, too. Yeah. The, uh, this, the lighting we in might here. even not How even take have, it. Uh, we shot this a, a whole. This is a whole nother day. We yeah, this was. We this. came back. We had to rocks, come dude. back because the, actually that the the kitchen, kitchen took scene took like a long sixteen hours to shoot. No, it took like six hours, but we started super late at night. Hands and here's my here's the biggest mistake in the whole movie is that they're drinking whiskey in way too large of a glass. I mean, my dad always points that out to me. A toast. But I think maybe Dale's just trying to get him really, really drunk before they go do what they're about to do. Well you have that um, He's like seducing him with whiskey. That uh line is cut out. It's like yeah, uh, take uh ice. No, yeah, no, he says it. I, I think didn't he hear just it. said it. Did it. Maybe it was another one. I don't know. I this scene was heavily cut down too. There's a whole, a whole bunch of other stuff. I mean, he's basically saying, "Dude, we're gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna bring this guy to the police. We're gonna fucking kill him. Are you down with that?" And he uses Disney to do it. He's like, "You fucking like old Yeller?" <laughs> he's like, "Remember old Yeller?" Yeah, they had to put that yeah, fucker down, so it's like, that's what we gotta do, you know? What do you do with a dog that has rabies? And that was the thing I was so attached to, I couldn't let it go. I couldn't let it go. How hard can we really go on him, you know? I love this, I love this shot. As hard as we want. It's cre creepy. Right. Yeah. That's what that 14 millimeter yeah. really give you. It's like... Really it's in their just, face. Man. It just goes to show you that it really doesn't matter yeah, what uh, camera you're using. It, it's all about the glass, or it's way more about the glass than it's the camera. Didn't really watch too much Disney growing up because these lenses are just so clear. This, I think this opens up at the at its so widest at a 2.3, which is not too great, Disney. but considering. So. Right, a childhood passion. Really, I, I mean, I love Boy. Jeff's performance in this, too. He's he's freaking great here. Sorry, he's fucking I'm psychotic. Not, I'm not really sure I follow. My favorite Disney movie growing up was uh, Fantasia. I mean, yeah, Fantasia was a pretty good one. Yeah, Bobby's pretending right, old he's yeller. too cool for Where's school one minute, and then the next yeah, minute he's not. Of course. So did Janie. It was one of her favorites. Really? 
Yeah. See, in this version of the movie, Joey. Bobby's not really the boyfriend. He's just like kind of like he always really himself. liked her, and Older. you know, yeah, yeah, he yeah. wants Dale's really approval. But you know, they were never really together. Right, what right. It was really about. Yeah, that would be pretty tough on a kid who didn't understand. Here he goes in for the kill. I would. Bobby. Exactly how many times have you roughed him up now? See, all this part yeah, doesn't make times. any sense. And yet. I think this makes he still No, but it's finds this is this is all tied into a, a plot a subplot of necrophilia yeah, that never occurs. The whole point of this yeah. movie is is originally necrophilia. James it is supposed is to fuck a dead girl. He's and that's why these guys and these guys are trying to prevent that from happening and it just never happens. So it just sort of ch it changes everything around. No, not really. And he's trying to convince this guy, Bobby, I, I want you to help me murder this dude. Not really. And they're going to do it in a very nefarious way. When a dog has rabies. They're going to... They're going <laughs> to... <laughs> the police. <laughs> yeah. You like that? It's a mental health country club. He'll be living it up. Like, like a vacation. Yeah, I like this part. Is that Did you love how is, is that justice? Uh, you look no. at his, his eyeballs are so shiny and well, weird. Well, the way... That lens frames Bobby, you know? I mean, there's a yeah, lot of good shots great. in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In general, there's a lot of good shots. This and this Both stuff. The stuff would came out really good. Before the, this back and forth basement. was shot well. Are we? We need to protect her because we love her, right? Yes. This moment. Oh, that's right. Never been more I put this line back in. To me as to why Janie picked you. So I guess maybe they were together. Wakey, wakey, and this was our longest shooting day. Oh my god. This, this was a 16 day. page day, 13 hours. In and a garage. In a garage. Scarsdale. In Scarsdale. And you know what was crazy? If this didn't come out, if this didn't get shot, then the movie was done. And the whole movie, the, this entire movie was predicated on finishing this this these scenes which we was did easy. this and then we prepped the uh, graveyard scene no uh, not on the same day no? no 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 we were in the we were here the entire time this, i mean this was this not was, a bad day to sh i mean it was a fun day but it was full it was a, a long it was I mean, long it was to long do it right we, yeah. i think we did it right we did and um, we got a lot of coverage yeah we got a lot of what what helped me was I used the monopod and that allowed me to sort of float around uh, and at the same time it didn't help me because quite honestly I've I, never seen focus. the final uh, this is already looking amazing this what is amazing. The, the final part of this right here well I've just I've never seen the final edit I don't think like this. Deal, James. so it feels more like a movie to you oh yes sorry. yes told you can take that pen and that piece of paper. Oh, this is the best right here. So, originally, he's supposed to burn him with a blowtorch, and that was really unsafe. So I'm like, oh, he'll electrocute him. But we didn't have an electrocution device, so we invented this box. And that's a bicycle pump and some weird lights, and it just, it's, it, 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 it's mysterious. Jeff is like the king of creating, like, these, like... Non real, uh, yeah. Devices. I mean, but it looks fucking crazy. Pen, Look at that. You got, you got lights blinking and yeah. shit. You can see the film, you able to see. She can't really see the film grain that's over this. There's a lot of yeah. film grain. It really looks like it's shot on 16 when you watch it uh, in high definition. <laughs> please, please just let me go. You're not going anywhere, shit stain. You can hear the birds chirping in the back, in the very, when it's very quiet, you can hear yeah. the birds yeah, chirping. Yeah, I couldn't get rid of it. Uh, nobody cares. Yeah, nobody gives a Your shit. But at the time, I was super stressed hey. about it. But Dude, it was I know. So I, was didn't like, I was like, Jeff, nobody cares. I love how there are all these implements of torture in the background, but in the end, they just like electrocute him. I was him. with another girl. Sam. Lovely that. Yeah, it's just like, oh, fuck. It's like, oh, shit. He, what a great. She fucked me too. He, he, like dude, him? he he was like he, he was so good in this. Look at look at him. He's so betrayed. Just looking at yeah. Him. It's true. In it's a way, true. that's the most hurtful thing that they do to him. Out of everything they do to him in this basement, that's the worst. 
they Tommy. electrocute him and they stab mm. him. They do all this shit. This and is that, the worst. That the betrayal. It was never important. Yeah, that. That's the thing that so hurts James the most. Insignificant. So fucking insignificant. Actually, it's crazy. No one's gonna notice if you go missing. <laughs> it's not fair. fair. This piece of music is in this over and over fair. again. Dale's brain. It's Wait, called. I like this shot. I mean, I literally freeballed it on a monopod from a bunch of different angles and just cut it all together. And this just barely fucking cut together. <laughs> That's an elect, uh, DC charge. This cool. is taken from Phantom of the Paradise, from the electrocution scene with Beef, where you just chop up all the frames and jumble them all up. And I built that electric that electric device and just, you know, we're just. this is one of the most stylistic elements of the movie right us. there boom and we just wave flashlights across their face that was really fun to shoot too yeah that was totally fun I mean it looks great From literally it looks so great uh, I waving mean, flashlights like that's not in the script face. that's not in the script that was invented during production so it's amazing how the the writing process is is impacted through the different aspects of the filmmaking process yeah 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 you, you can't stomach the torture it's too bad we couldn't actually get some special effects to show the burns or the singes. I think if we if we had just gotten some smoke, maybe. I know that would have been yeah, that would have worked, would have and we just couldn't get it together. Flying by the seat of our pants. What's it gonna be, James? I love this slap. What's it gonna be, James? James. More juice. And there's our 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 amorphous our amorphous elect letter. electronic device that doesn't really do anything. <laughs> In the background, that was just an old cabinet my parents I love that. had. It I was love hollowed that. out. Yeah, you just don't know what it is. Yeah, I love it's that. never talked about. He doesn't say what it is. He just says I'm gonna juice you. You could have charged my fucking cell phone. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, burn, burn. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it's just black, too, in the background. You yeah, can't see yeah. shit. You, you don't know what's back there. It's just, you know... It's, oh, there's a garage door back there. There, there is. There that. is. I mean, the movie, it's kind of like almost like a film noir more than it is a horror movie, in a way. Oh, definitely. It's, it's definitely art house uh, horror. Yeah. And we just shot this from so many different angles, and I was like, I, I, was like, I can reveal this flashback gradually, and it will leave people feeling curious so that was all that none of that was in the, the script that was all figured out in the edit and this music i did myself the, uh, you don't stay here to fucking wait, wait just stop wait this barely cut so together you so don't understand patience. i was always like a frame away from just being totally in disarray this the, the movie wouldn't have happened without this, well, this actually stuff. this is a uh, cutting weight better uh, together right. than exactly. I, I originally right. saw it. Well, because you saw probably the roughest cut. I mean, I yeah, yeah. cut and trimmed and cut and trimmed. You. You're gonna pop like a fucking grape. Oh, another sick bird, dude. You understand me? I love that. You understand me? He probably could have broken out of the, he probably wiggled out of those restraints. I would think so. Begin yeah, but he's all like shocked and stuff. Dear Grandma, <laughs> dear Grandma, I'm writing to let you know that. See, this was good, but I wish he cried. He should have cried here. No, he should. He should want to get. He should have gone full it's Nicholas Cage. <laughs> yeah. Period. He was, you know, he was very caged throughout this whole. He film. goes cage. He goes cage. Uh, I, I need to start with a fresh slate. Period. He's like, what? What does a fresh slate mean? Oh shit. <coughs> that took like three to four takes. We had to keep hitting him in the head, and he was oh, totally a sport. Yes. He's totally a sport about it. I'm sure, you understand. It's like why. you're like, no, that one wasn't good. Enough. He's smacking him again. No, he. I. You know what? I think he was insistent that we do it until it was right, though. He was pretty good and about Sunday, that. Sunday. Well, you know. We'll meet again. You're right. How's it going? Is it records? No, it's all right. Right. Good. good. I like this shot too. I love you very much. <laughs> 
This is somewhat more cinematic Sorry. than I remember it being. I don't Dude, think I've I seen wish this you, Final you need cut to see though. it. You, no, this is a brand new Final Cut. That's you what need I mean. to see it on. You need to see it on a high definition screen because you're missing all the beautiful grain and all the. No, but I honestly, Jeff. Yeah. This this Final Cut. This is this, this is, is the Final Cut. Yes. This is amazing. Good. It really, it really is. It's not Indeed, dragging it's in a lot of the places where I really right thought it. So you think it overall, because you've seen it through all of its different incarnations. You think it's really picking. Uh, I think it, it moves at a much faster pace. I think it's such moving. Good. Oh, oh my god. Good. This too. So, I mean, this is supposed to be the beginning of the original ending. So he 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 try. You know, he plants the letter. There's this whole thing where have a shovel the, fight. There was supposed to be a lightsaber shuttle fight. It's not really lightsabers, but it's supposed to feel like yeah. they're fighting with lightsabers. He's telling him to park down the block. He leaves, and then Dale calls him, and he's like, save her! And we actually shot that part and didn't shoot the rest. Okay. All right, go now. You just heard the, bir hear the birds chirping. Yes, sir. And now we see Dale at his most raw and most cagey. So this is where the monopod killed me. It was like racking fo Sorry, soft focus. Of really? How much did you expect? His performance here is excellent, though. We're only human. We're infected, consumed by you until you're gone. You won't be you free. Know, and it was funny, he like made me change that line because he was like, my character would never say this. And this. he insisted that that be the line. An I was like, sure. Because like, you know, the writer, the, 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 the actors Knowing create the character. Should you yeah. don't create the character. You can write yeah, the character, but he, they create the character. You can tell he's full he's on into it. Right? Yeah, right here. This part, yeah. He's razor focused. You're not out there somewhere creeping around. <laughs> I hate. I always fucking hated that this was the gag, because quite clearly he could talk, and he's going. Rrr, rrr, rrr. It's like, dude, we know you can talk. <laughs> Whatever, man. It's no this is great. This is great, though. I went to the trouble of removing the gag. This was a great part of this worked well. That didn't though. Oh, I hate. I hate no, no, that. I like that. I, I like hate that. that. I, I hate like that. how it goes out of focus. But, but that's like that's just me trying to rack focus, and I can't do it fast enough. Say it. Say it. This I'll line was fucking ass again. You can do whatever you want to me, but it will never change the fact how much I care about your daughter. Trailer moment. Ooh. See, that was great. He delivers the line so friggin' well, but he doesn't say it right. How, how does this he sort of jumbles, that? you know, he's like jumbling the word, whatever. I mean, it gets I the point across. So. I love this. I love that the shovel is right there in the frame. And you're like, where's he going? Oh, how, are we, yeah, we, this was we, great. Uh, this we, was fucking we, great. We put Listen this, this up. Like Listen to this. You can hear the... Gives it like some heft, you know. Ooh. Oh, yes, it gives some good Boy, volume. That little, huh? that little speaker really uh, you know? yeah. conveys the sound it's design good. well. Bobby was right about this doesn't make any sense because we cut out the shit stain earlier on. You are a little shit stain. <laughs> Ooh, those, those sound good on friggin' James? I want you to use your imagination. I want you to imagine that you're pain, you're oh. feeling in your leg right now with this. Oh, this is the only... Us. I like those smash This guys. is the only uh, special effects, like blood, in the whole film. You, it's chocolate syrup. And uh, I used the plastic garden trowel. No, just the plastic garden trowel. I bought two. I saw it one in half. Yeah, I saw one in half and then put it on his leg. And that's the only effect we have in the whole film. That my daughter would ever reciprocate your sick little feelings. That you would we totally ever, cut out the um ever be a part of this household. Yeah, I'm gonna No no no, that's coming right now. Oh, it's coming. Uh, yeah, that's my I love that part. Now, what you're about to see is a cutaway shot to the courtyard of my apartment built complex. Actually. Because there was no pile of bricks. 
And that's movie magic. You can just, you you know, don't show your whole frame and then turn away and you suddenly uh, somewhere else. And it works. James, I've electric. And I've always been a huge fan of Edgar Allan Poe, and I like uh, the Cask of Montalado is my favorite story. And I was like, what better, what better revenge than to brick someone up into a wall? And his justification is, we're not going to actually kill you. We're just going to put you in the wall. We're going to take those bricks. Love this. So that's in a that's completely different place, and that's in the basement of the, of the apartment building. So these like these two things they cut so well into the. Oh my god, looks yeah, so that good. looked good too, right? It looks there, so right? good, dude. Yeah. It worked. And you know you know, I mean it's just like I, I, I just sometimes you envision something in your mind and it and it makes sense to you and you do it and it works and sometimes it doesn't and you gotta workshop it, you know. And here's my wife. My wife's cameo is coming up. And now though? Yep. You'll see her in a second. Hear her in a second. Simply cease to exist. Out of sight, out of mind. The world, the world will keep spinning, and we'll move on to to more important things. Yep. <laughs> Shit. Uh -huh. He originally he says shit like three times and it sounds so bad. I like had to cut out two of the shits. Barb. That's enough. Oh, wow. You sound so much better. How is it down there? Ah, it's so wonderful here. I mean <laughs> I mean, this is his wife, and he sent her away on a retreat so that he could do this to James. That's what you're supposed to know from this scene. But it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. And there's, he's pulling out the trowel. I wish I could be there. Um, God, that's painful. Uh, and he's pulling it out. This was shot reverse. Boom. I just did a reverse whip there. And we're, 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 we're so close to finding out what happened to Jane. We're going to find gonna, out shortly. Say the Dark Knight. This my, was my car. Yeah, that's right. This was so nerve. That was so nerve wracking to shoot because I was just so f we were very close to the cars and I just was I don't know. This is the uh, dream score. This is the only thing that I personally scored. I just did it on my MacBook Pro. <laughs> and uh, yeah, There's some blood, Night of Living Dead style. I love you too. Ah, oh, I just realized there's a trowel in Night of Living yes. Dead too. I wonder if that's where yeah, it came I'll, from I'll subconsciously. Dale, the, once again, the Jaws theme, that chugging theme works so well for this, the build-up. Okay. You know, something's going to happen. Uh, you just, it should have been a little bit more yeah, violent, I think. You just keep enjoying yourself, okay, well? I had to shoot a cutaway of James hobbling towards Dale because I realized we okay. never shot it on the day. So I jumped in the suit, went down to my basement, and shot this little insert of me as James. He's just like yes and her death. He's like, I gotta get back to this fucking kid. He's like, gets back there. Where the fuck did he go? Look, oh. so easy to slip out. Oh. And here's me. Who's that? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and here's the only other blood we have in the movie. Let's see that. Uh, did we get the? Um... Please don't. That was fun to shoot. Oh dude, man, that came out really nice. You. Dude, this is really good, man. Just, just leave her alone. Don't do anything, please. Yeah, so he's Nothing dying. I mean, he's clearly dying, right? I'm sick. <coughs> I'm sick. He's saying it's so sick because you're gonna fuck I'm my dead daughter, face. but he never does it. Really it doesn't alone. really happen. He, it's more romantic the way it happens. We have the silhouette. I guess. I do of course. Yes. You were there that day when I shot that. And now he, it's a little bit of foley there. And this was so much fun to shoot. We just started sh inserting shots of this gravedigger yes. character. 
played by myself. It's my little director's cameo. I had Anthony, Anthony's uh, backyard, right? Yes, yes. And yeah. he, Anthony had a fog machine, and we just shot those shots. God, I spent months on that tombstone. There's our first shot of the fake tombstone. This is Fox Middle School uh, Elementary School. God, the way he rolls. so <laughs> I love it. It's great. Watch. Look at his crab walk. Crab walk. <laughs> <laughs> and this is supposed to launch Bobby into the final act originally, but it never happens because we reconfigured everything. So this is where his story ends. His story ends here. You know He's what? On the hook. CC uh, disappears anyway, so it don't matter. Well, CC, CC, and ex- you know what? Everybody's sort of arcs in the story. They gracefully enter and they gracefully leave. And so this is where Bobby's just left. What He's completed the plan and Dale is dead. And he calls Dale and Dale doesn't pick up because he's dead but originally Dale does pick up and Dale goes save her you have to save her right but we just don't know that Jane's really dead and that they're saving a corpse from being defiled (laughs) and uh, this is some beautiful score done by Nick look at that you can see the bats flying you see that bat oh yeah it was a bat and this was there's just a big spotlight right there and we just shot it just this works a, so well. This isn't even... We didn't even put that there. It yeah, was, it was just there. We stuff. we did a test of this. There's footage of you doing this. Yeah. With your sunglasses on. And I just looped the same breathing noise over and over again in the grass that we saw earlier. Over and over again because I needed something underneath this because originally there was nothing. This was all blank. Now, this is us at... 2 a.m. in a cemetery with a guy with a shovel <laughs> shooting a movie. You know, I guess Nick's right. We could have just been perceiving. Kind of looks like he's traveling to like this nether world in a way. Dude, this is awesome, man. I have not seen this cut like this. Uh, this is yeah, no, amazing. It came out, looking, came out man. fucking good. And it works well with the music. It's so tragic, you know? And then... And this was a the last afterthought beyond an afterthought. <laughs> you see the gravediggers approaching, and we finally learn that Jane is dead. She's been dead this Jane whole time. Matthews. And I spent the entire summer paper macheing that fucking tombstone. And it kind of looks like crap, to be honest with you. Your tombstones look great. Dude, so this, this is my whole backyard. Set. <laughs> Look, we. This, this is, is my a parents' fake. backyard. This is a fake. <laughs> it looks very fake, but it just is stylized. It's nice, you know. It's beautiful. No, and the it's fog awesome, machine. dude. Look at that. I bought I dirt. Before. I bought did dirt you, from. Did you yes, save that yes, one? Yes, yes, they're all, all right. saved. I have them all. And uh, that's just a pile of dirt. I bought dirt at Home Depot to pile on to mulch, <laughs> and I put plastic bags. And remember, you were like freaked out about using that dude's name. <laughs> You're like, dude, don't do it. I was like, I have to. <laughs> Thanks, Francis. He's approaching. And this is actually Michael Fells on camera because I'm acting. Yeah. Dear G. He wrote, wrote on the back of her picture. <laughs> I have decided that I must seize the day. And so I've started I by never li- I life. never should have walked in like that. That was so stupid. Here's Jeff. That's Jeff walking in. Yeah. And here is the final. Finally, we're getting answers, people. He picked the flower. Nick thought at the very last minute to put the fucking flower in. And here's Nick killing Jane. That's my card. Ready? Here, Ready? Here's what? my card. Oh, red floor. That's the only other boor, uh, gore. I love you, Jane. Use the, the syringe. I first saw you. There used to be this whole deep inside of me. I would have had him read this differently. He, I mean, uh, do this differently, too. He should That's have paused too, uh, more. Uh, bottomless, no matter what I tried to put into it. I mean, he's supposed to read this note, you looked at me. jump in the grave and fuck her. And I'm Bobby's supposed to, to find... Look how, look how good that looks. Yeah. Oh, no, it looks good. I knew you were my true it's all good. Desire. This is a punk rock do- uh, commentary. It's okay. Now, until forever... So he's basically like Romeo. He really does become Romeo because he drinks poison and he joins his Juliet. 
but what's so tragic and sad is that she was never his Juliet. It was all in his fucking mind. He fucking forced her to be his Juliet. Just look how good that looks. Yeah. It's amazing. I'm fucking man. very happy with it, believe me. This is a trailer moment, I think. This is entirely in Jeff from us's uh parents, parents backyard. backyard. It's crazy, right? And then this was made up on the spot. This poison, this poison in the vial. He drinks the poison and you know goes and lies down with her and we didn't dig the grave because it was my yeah. parents backyard that was always a problem we never, we're like how we are we going to dig hole. this hole never we're dug like, a how, hole how are we going to dig this hole we actually pan down it you're going to see it in one second that's just a black a black blanket covering the black. ground yeah totally works i hear the heartbeat i inserted after he swallows the poison his heart starts beating <sighs> He sort of just lies down. That's the last time we see James. He cuts away. This was shot well. This reverse. Dude, this this yeah. this fucking monument you built was I fucking hate it. amazing. It's man. You know, it still exists. It's totally because I used Mod Podge. It's like perfectly hermetically yeah, sealed. Yeah. And those are little like Jesus lights that I bought at like a Mexican bodega. I still have those. Somewhere. Even like all the all these yeah, just uh, looks, things that. Oh. Hear that? Hear the grave digging? That's yep. all done from audio blocks. Cool. Totally worked. And now here's Nick, probably my favorite piece of music that Nick did. The song is so beautiful to me. This was, I said, Nick listened to the Ravenettes, the beat dies at the end of the, uh, the album, yeah. Lust, Lust, Lust. And I said, Nick, make something like this song. That's what I do. I go, Nick, make something like XYZ Zong. And Nick would just do it. And nine times out of ten, he nailed it. One time, he didn't really nail it. No, not honestly. The, not but the T-S-O-L. Here's the note that James was forced to write his grandma. So grandma thinks James has just left. Grandma takes the note at face, and she's just like, good for you, James. Carpe diem. She has no idea. And I guess she it makes her think of her husband, and that's why she's so upset. I mean, none of this was ever really figured out. I just sort of... That's what I'm saying. It's like a movie of themes. It's not a movie of plot. It's a movie yeah, of... Yeah. But there is story. There's and so And this much I story. love. This is beautiful. This is actually the most... I don't know. This is uh, the most enjoyable uh, screening of it I've ever Good. seen. You should have seen it on the big screen with the audience. We had a full audience at the Nightmares Film Festival. It was, yeah. it was something else. And that. this is James. This is James. This is Udemeyer Park again, and it's just a gorgeous place. Yonkers, New York. This baby. is James's uh, death dream. I call it the death dream. And James has a death dream, and he imagines himself as the king, and uh, she's the queen, his gothic queen, and like he's just a fucking weirdo wearing a cape with like weird <laughs> makeup that totally looks weird. But he's like in paradise. This is his paradise. This is his after, his afterworld. And he's envisioned it. Right. See, that was put in the background, but you'll see, you'll see in just a second. You know, in his dreams, she was his girl in his dreams, but he just never, she, he was like a weird creepo in real life. It's like, you know, so there's like a lot of stuff running through here. And it, all right, this is the final shot. And then we pan back to his be his bedroom, see? And it's he's, as if he's envisioned it the whole time. Oh, I love this music so much. And the gravedigger ends up becoming sort of like our storyteller. And that's just like a little outtake. We're just like, fuck it. I Stick love it that. There. Yeah, the cross. Yeah, man. yep. And now our cast of characters. Yeah, this is really compressed. Wow. And those are just some B-roll shots. And yeah, so that's my little movie. Um, it's, you know, rough Jeff around the edges. I promise, ed everybody. It's, it's rough around the edges. Richard Vane actually played the gravedigger, not myself. I was a fake shemp. <laughs> but, Dick um, Vane. Look, there's your associate producer credit. <laughs> and, um, yeah, man, you know, uh in Shit, reality, man. only there were only like two people made this movie, but you know, it was made with a lot of heart. That's one thing I can say about this film. It may not be; it's a flawed film, 
but it was made with heart and it was made with passion and a lot of influences. And uh, I'm very proud of this movie. It's like my, my child. And um, look, Richard Vane and his harsh feelings. <laughs> Original score by Nick Bohan. Oh, there you go. And your, your special thanks coming up somewhere. I got a special thanks. Of course Nimvin. you do. Under yeah, Nimvin, yep. uh, NTSO. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> All right. Under Nimvin, and and, and under the Ravenettes too. Yeah, under the Ravenettes. Um, but yeah, every everybody in this these credits, I couldn't have done it without them. And um, you know, Quentin Tarantino. I can't believe you know. It's funny. I started the first draft of this script this month, four years ago, and now here we are, four years later, recording the commentary, because I'm gonna fucking put this on Blu-ray. I wanna make a new movie, it's gonna fucking happen. Here's the most important way it's coming up. This is the most important uh, thing, so whoever states the end, I don't know why on earth West they Chester, would. Westchester, New York, baby. There you go. I'm very proud of that. This movie was made primarily in Westchester, and it's a fucking movie, man. It's a fucking movie. And um, and this is the most important line: never give up and dancing. Dancing. Yep. All right. And that's it. And, and so that uh, concludes. <laughs> oh no! It's starting oh, again. Yeah. Oh no! We're caught in the loop. Whoa! I love cheesecake. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's the fucking end. So thanks for uh, hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you uh-huh. so much for. Uh, having the patience to hear us uh, blow smoke up our asses. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Had a lot of fun.